When you're looking at mirrorless cameras from Canon, there's a number of options out there. I'm doing another comparison today to give you an idea of what you can do. We've got two cameras here, the M5 released in 2016 and the M50 released in 2018. Both a few years old, but they're still holding their own. You can see prices at the moment on Amazon and you're seeing things like nearly $900 for the M5 and the M50 you're looking at things like 879 that's the Mark II version there but they are very similar one's a newer release than the other one basically so if I look at the comparison let's see what do we think about this so the first thing to note there obviously one is the M5 it was released before the M50 so that's something to consider it's an older camera versus the M50 you can have two year difference there nearly a year and a half um, okay so they're both SLR style mirrorless cameras and one has a metal construction body so metal construction means it will look a, a lot more pleasing to the eye so let's give you an idea of what i mean so if you look at that body there see that detail there but then if you look at the m5 it just looks a bit more like a matte stealth kind of look to it it's very nice it's pleasing to the eye again we've looked at a few cameras today but these are mirrorless options so let's go back to the side by side comparison slr We've got similar max resolutions because that makes me think they're going to be the same megapixels, which they are, 24 megapixels each, the sensors, uh, which is adequate for most uh, use. One has a Digic 7 processor, one has a Digic 8 processor. If you're not familiar with Digic processors, they basically handle the camera's capability of high ISO performance, giving you expanded ISO performance and how it handles those extra pixels, digically making them a bit better basically, as well as auto-focusing and handling the video preset modes, things like that, is handled by the Digic processors in the Canon's uh, lineup of cameras. So there's a difference of a generation there. We've got, you can see there, that what I mean by that, that expands to a higher ISO 51,200, which the processor basically helps with. Um, in addition to that, we're gonna get things like additional focus points the m50 being a new camera has 143 and the m5 has 49 i always question that do you need that if you're any type of photographer you know you can focus and recompose so focus points are like a nice to have just another number to look at to uh, say you've got more than the other person but anyway the lens mounts are efm 1.6 crop sensor cameras so that makes me think there's APS-C cameras uh, lens uh, lens camera sensor size uh, one has a tilting screen and one has a fully articulating screen m50 being the fully articulating and let's look at these what else do we have down here okay so we're looking at nine frames a second continuous uh, photographs on the m5 versus 10 on the m50 so slight little variances between the two um the main thing here is going to be the video so the M5 does 60 frames a second in 1080p and you're going to get 24 frames a second in 4K on the M50. So that's basically where your main difference is, I think. Apart from that, the cameras are very comparable. The main thing to look at is, do you like the look of one versus the other? I do personally like the look of the M5. It looks very like Fujifilm style uh, old school cameras and metal construction bodies are nice little... Uh, addition there you can use this camera in different ways you can use it for personal use for holidays and mirrorless cameras have come a long way so you can even use them professionally if you wanted to a lot of people use uh, mirrorless now professionally the lighter the easier to carry so there's loads of benefits hoping you found that useful that's another comparison i've done for you you can see another comparison i did here and i'll see you on that video